Okay, I want to look at this question from Limpopo 2019, November. This question is actually very similar to a matric question that came in the matric trial exam in the same year. And um, I've seen more than a few of these that use this concept, so I want you to have a good look at this. So it says to you, two identical small spheres with a mass M equals to 14,3 grams are hung by silk threads of length L equals 1,25 meters from a common point. When the spheres are given equal quantities of negative charge, so that Q1 equals Q2 equals Q, each thread hangs at 30 degrees from the vertical as shown in the diagram. Treat the spheres as point charges. State in words Coulomb's law of electrostatics, there we go. Draw a labeled free body diagram for the left hand sphere with charge Q1. So this is not normally where you have to draw free body diagrams, but it's really not that hard to do. You just have to think about it. First of all, it's three marks, so you know you need three arrows, okay? So if you look at Q1, Q1 has got a mass M. The moment you've got a mass, you have a force from gravity acting on you, okay? So gravity is acting downwards, Fg. This little object here, if this was any other question that we had, we would say, oh, look at this little object. There's a string suspending it, so there's a force of tension in the string, and the force of tension is going to go upwards. And then now, how come this thing is not hanging vertically downwards? It has to be being repelled by this force. So this Q2 is pushing this Q1 in that direction. So to draw your free body diagram, this is what your free body diagram is going to look like, okay? If you have a look here. Here is going to be your weight acting downwards, Fg. There's your tension in the string acting up the string. And there is your electrostatic force. And these two are having equal and opposite forces. And Q2 is pushing Q1 in that direction there. And we call this Fe for F electrostatic. So there is our labeled free body diagram. Now it says to you, show by means of a suitable calculation that the magnitude of Q is 3,75 microcoulombs. And then you look at this question and you go, hmm. Okay. So the first thing you do whenever you get something that makes you want to go, hmm, is go and put as much information from the question on the diagram that you can. Okay. So I have done this earlier and we can have a look at what information we can use to put on this diagram here. Okay. The first thing that it tells you is that the string is 1,25 meters. So you write on here 1,25 meters, 1,25 meters. If these two are the same, then you know this is actually in an isosceles triangle, okay? Because if you've got two um, sides that are the same length, you have an isosceles triangle. And it also says to you each thread hangs at theta equals 30 degrees. So you draw in your 30 degrees, you draw in your 30 degrees. So 30 plus 30 is 60. And if you've got two sides the same length and a 60 degree up here, then you actually must realize that this is actually, in this case, an equilateral triangle. No, it does not look anything like an equilateral tri triangle in this drawing, but it is actually if you put the numbers in, okay? Because 30 plus 30 is 60. The angles at the base of isosceles triangle are equal, so these two must be 60, which means that you know how long is this distance between Q1 and Q2, it's going to be 1,25 meters, okay? However, sometimes this angle is not 30 here and it won't be an isosceles triangle. I mean, it won't be a equilateral triangle, but it is still going to be an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, you know, or if you've given the angle from the vertical, you know you can turn half of this diagram into a right angled triangle where this is the hypotenuse. And the moment you have a right angled triangle and you know the hypotenuse and you know an angle, you can find the opposite sides. And if you have a look here, this triangle and this triangle are congruent. So this distance here will be equal to this distance here. In this case, we don't necessarily have to calculate it, but we could use um, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse to find this distance 
that is half of the distance between Q1 and Q2. Why do we need the distance between Q1 and Q2? Because of the force formula, okay? Because the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So you have to first find the distance, okay? So already just by putting the information on the um, that is in the words on the diagram, you've got a lot of information, okay? So now it says to you, show by means of a suitable calculation that the magnitude of Q is 3,75 microcoulombs. So if they say show, okay, you have to end up with a sum, and the last line of the sum must say Q equals 3,75 microcoulombs. But you can't put Q in the question to begin with. So what you have to do is trust what you know, okay? So first of all, let's write down what we know. We know that the distance r equals 1,25 meters because it is an equilateral triangle. Okay, now remember I said to you, if it wasn't an equilateral triangle, you're going to have to use um, trigonometry to sort out the other side. Now we also have this force diagram. I'm going to move this diagram down here. Okay, we know they told you that M is 14,3 grams. So M equals 14,3 grams. Are we ever allowed to do anything in grams? No, we are not allowed to do anything in grams. So M equals 0, 0,0143 kilograms. Okay, so can we find FG? We can find Fg. Fg equals 0,0143 times 9.8. So we, ha we can get a value for Fg. We get 0,14014. Now I'm leaving it like this uh, because we're going to um, we can't round off this early in the question. So, okay, so now I've found Fg. So, all of these steps, they're not immediately telling you this show by means of a suitable calculation. But if you show all of this working, you can get your part marks. Look, this is nine marks. So, put everything you know in a calculation and explain it, and you can get um, marks. So, we should actually put the formula here, Fg equals Mg. Okay. So, now we've got... Fg downwards, okay? Can we calculate T? Now think about this here. Look back here. Do we have a theta? We do. So if we look at our force diagram here, this tension, okay, has got two components. And the vertical component of the tension must be equal to the weight. And the horizontal component must be equal to the electrostatic force. Why? Because the object is in equilibrium and this electrostatic component is completely horizontal, so it is not going to be affected by, um, it's not going to have a, a component that goes downwards. The only thing that's an angle is T, so it's the only one that can have a component that goes up and a component that goes across. So write that down, okay? Let's write on the side of this object. Write down what you know. So say T, 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 T sub X equals F E and T sub Y equals F G. Okay, because the object's in equilibrium. But now we have a value for F G. So what will T Y be? T, the Y component, is going to be cos or sine, sine, yes, T sine, and what is my theta? My theta is 60, T sine 60 equals FG equals 0, 0,14014, okay, which means we can write an expression for T. T equals 0, 0,14014 over the sine of 60. Okay, does this make sense? I hope this makes sense. Now we've got a value for T. 
okay but we also know okay that tx equals fe so if tx equals fe okay i can now say that i've got a value i've got an expression for t yes t equals this value 0 0.014 divided by the sine of 60 but tx will be equal to fe which will be equal to t cos 60 do you agree because it's the horizontal component here okay so this will be equal to if we substitute for t i've got 0 0.14014 Okay, this would be a lot easier to see if it was in fractions. Divided by the sine of 60, okay, multiplied by, that's not multiplied by, multiplied by the cos of 60. Because all we've done here is we've said what is t and this value here, okay, this is t and now I've put that over here, okay. And I have then gone and um, multiplied it by the cos of 60. So now I've actually got a, a, a numerical value for Fe. And we need Fe because we want to calculate Q. Okay, And the only way we can calculate a charge with a force is using this formula. So now we've done some prep work. Okay, So we can put the formula over here. And we can say, what do we know? What do we know? We know the distance r. Okay. We've got a value for Fe. Okay. And we've rationalized how we got this value. We wrote it somewhere so that we can see it. We know that Q1 equals Q2. And we have a value for K. Okay. Okay. this over here so using everything that you've done so far you can now substitute into this formula you write the formula f equals k q1 q2 over r squared so we're going to take this this value here and you can work it out on your calculator or you can just type it here so we're going to go f e equals this value okay which is equal to k 9 times 10 to the 9, okay, times, okay, and now they told you right up at the beginning of the question here, Q1 equals Q2 equals Q, so we can actually put in here Q squared, okay, and this is all over, that is not divided by, that is not divided by again, this is all over the distance r squared. And what distance would we work out for r? We said this is an equilateral triangle, so it's going to be 1, 25 squared. So if you have a look here, on the left-hand side of the equation here, we've got a value. On the right-hand side, we've got a value. And the only thing that we are left to find is q squared. So if you do all of the algebra on this, okay, you should come out with Q equals 3,75 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, which is the same as 10 micro, um, 3,75 micro coulombs, okay? And so then you have shown your calculation for the proof. So the main thing that I want you to get out of this is, even though it looks confusing, if you apply everything you know from forces and how vectors work, you will end up with the correct answer. But also remember that you know trigonometry and geometry, and if you fill in all the information from the question, it's not as hard as it looks. And always you can get part marks along the way, so long as you show all of your working, like what is FG, Tx equals Fe, Ty equals Fg. This can have been a calculation from using sine, cos, and tan 
and then you just take the formula and you trust your formula and you substitute into the formula and then even if you've done something wrong somewhere along the way okay you can have got all of these part marks even if the last line doesn't work out you've used the formula you've substituted what you thought was the correct value into it then you can have got like seven of your nine marks even if the final proof is not there 